Good afternoon, Western Australia. In this wonderful country where I am. It is 28 October 2024. It is 5 p.m. I'm in the glorious book, in the glorious book of Philippians. These are a few words of God, brothers and sisters. Paul wrote, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ. So we're talking about consolation in Christ. If any comfort of love. If any fellowship of the Spirit. If any bowels and mercies. This is a very endearing, very endearing way of talking. <clears throat> Consolation, comfort, fellowship, bowels and mercy. It's all the love of God. The being for any consolation. Consolation, and comfort, comfort of love. It's something that we all need in the course of this life. We are saved. We are sealed by grace and faith. Christ atoned for our sins. We believe that. We receive that glorious gospel. The glory and praise goes to Him. But life can be, and it is, difficult sometimes, tough. We need this comfort, <clears throat> consolation, comfort, and any fellowship of the Spirit. If any bowels and mercies. Now, this expression, bowels, we, we think, well, what is it talking about? Because we know the bowels is a physical part here in the belly, but it's an expression to say the seat of emotions, sentiment, the bowels of mercies, the mercies of Christ for us. If there be a, therefore any, okay? Then in verse 2, it said, fulfill ye my joy. So the Apostle Paul is talking to the believer, that's the rest of the body here in Philippi, fulfill you my joy. So we have joy in Christ, but when we see that this harmony among us believers in the faith, in the doctrine, fulfill you my joy, that ye be like-minded. How can we be like-minded? Having the same love, being of one accord or one mind. As long we understand that it's talking about the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is the doctrine. It's the doctrine that we find in the letters of Paul, the revelation of the mystery given to him for us, the body of Christ. So this is Christ speaking to us, instructing us, giving us his doctrine from heaven. It's the same Christ who walked on earth in Jerusalem, in Israel, in his earthly ministry. But we, the worship Christ, <clears throat> we don't preach Christ according to the red letters. That would be for our learning. In his ministry to Israel, he, he said, I've been sent by only to the Lord sheep of the house of Israel. Matthew 15, 24. I've been sent, but only to the Lord sheep of the house of Israel. He said the twelve to the Lord sheep of the house of Israel. Do not go in the way of the Gentiles. Do not go in the way of the Samaritans. In the city of the Samaritans. And you know, but go rather to the Lord sheep of the house of Israel. That's the ministry of Christ to his earthly nation. And we were not included. <clears throat> you can squeeze yourself in. As much as you try, it doesn't work because you are not in any way, shape, form a sheep of the Lord. You're not a member of the 12 tribes. You're not a lost sheep of the house of Israel. <laughs> if you are saved and sealed, you are part of the new creature, so you're receiving now information, instructions, the will of God from heaven. From the reason ascended glorified Christ that is speaking to all the chosen vessel unto him in this dispensation of the grace of God for us and say, 
fulfill ye my joy, be that ye be like minded. Once again, it's not that we conformism, we're all like robots. Yes, yes. We have the mind of Christ, we know the doctrine. Until this happens, you cannot have your joy fulfilled. Because when you meet another one and say, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, but he goes around telling, Oh, you know, God is doing this and doing that, according to the red letters, and you know that he's not doing it. Inevitably, there's going to be a contrast. Inevitably, there's going to be a debate. Because as long as you stay ignorant of the revelation of the mystery, and as long as you don't preach Christ according to the revelation of the mystery given to both for us, as long as you don't understand that we are in the dispensation of the grace of God, you still think that you are a child of the king, And going into the kingdom. Are you not? This goes straight away against all the teachings that you receive in church Sunday after Sunday and week after week, month after month. In that denomination of choice, doesn't matter if it is one or another. The same is they still preach in Christ in disobedience to his will. Because they preach in the gospel of the kingdom. They take the great commission given the twelve at the end of the gospels and in the book of Acts at the beginning and they think that's to us. No, it's not. I don't know if you have seen or realized or came to understand that Christ has been rejected from his earthly nation in Israel except a little flock who believe. He promised the kingdom. He was bringing the kingdom and the new covenant. They reject the king and the kingdom. He was fulfilling prophecy after prophecy. He fulfilled more than 300, more than 350 prophecies concerning the first coming of the Messiah. Jesus, the Lord, the Savior, to his earthly people, to Israel. You can go on my website. You can see how many prophecies he fulfilled. Prophecy fulfillment, prophecy amazing. That proves beyond any possibility of doubt that this is the pure words of God, the King James Bible, are the words of God, pure words of God, preserved, infallible, inspired, which means God breathed. Even though you continue to use NIV, which is not inspired version, but you know, and you continue to believe what your pastor, your local pastor, or the pastor on the internet. On YouTube, their domination, so and so, he tells you know, you know, that we have this power to do this and that. We haven't. If you got the power to heal the sick, cast the devils, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, freely give, free, freely you receive, freely give, please do it. Don't talk about it. You got the power to heal people? Please go and visit. The word of cancer word of the little children of the hospital here in Fremantle, uh, uh, Perth, there is the children's children's children hospital. There are wonderful children, very, very sick. You got this power. You are Pentecost word of faith, charismatic, Holy Spirit filled, anointed healer. Please go and heal these wonderful children. But you haven't got this power. That's why you don't go. But you entertain your crowd, your victims, in the four walls of the building or in the four walls of the internet channel and tell them things which are not happening and God is not doing and he's not going to do for you or for me or for anybody. God has got a program, a plan that follows his will according to his eternal purpose and is building the body of Christ. He hasn't promised to the body of Christ all these very, all these uh, powerful uh, operations. Even though Paul, at a certain beginning, in the beginning of his ministry, had these powers, they were rescinded. I mean, Paul <laughs> himself he prayed three times concerning an affliction that he had, and let's not go in the in the. Details of what? Whatever it is, he prayed three times and three times I said, the Lord said to him, No, my, my grace is sufficient for thee. 
So Paul said, oh, then I will, I will rejoice in my sufferings and in the tribulation because when I'm weak, then I'm strong because it's the Spirit of Christ rests on me. But we don't want to learn this. Hey, brother, I'm sick. Don't worry. Put the hands on you. You're going to be healed. And all these prayers, formulas, kind of witchcraft. And nobody gets healed. And people get discouraged. And then you bring shame to the Word of God because it looks like God is lying. No, it's not. You are lying. Your pastor is lying. Your denomination is lying. God is not doing that to please you. Or anybody out there that's collecting tithes, God is saving souls, which is the greatest gift ever. Saving souls and edifying believers, the body of Christ, is creating a new creature. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, not born again. And it isn't so difficult. Okay, I was in this ignorance for 40 years. So, I'm not accusing of anything, but the point is, when finally, instead of re reading the ESV, NIV, the, the Spirit-filled Bible, all corrupt Bibles, I came to the King James Bible, and I start, started to study the letters of all, Romans, all the way through Philemon, and this one of those, I start to see the, all the stuff they taught me in those 40 years, and I was teaching to, I was guilty of the same, horrible mistake, they don't fit, they are not right. I'm not saying that God doesn't heal, that's ridiculous. There is no healer but the Lord. He's not doing that because we are not priests and no kings going into the kingdom. We are members of a new creature, the body of Christ. And we have healing program, which is a new glorified body in every place is in Christ forever. So please, please leave this idolatry, healing at all costs. Gifts of the Spirit at all costs. I got to have all the gifts. Why? To exalt yourself? Go and see what the Spirit, the Spirit was giving the gifts at the beginning to, for the benefit of the entire body, not to exalt you anointed, whatever you are. And I can name all the names, you know, here there is Margaret Court, and then there is Ben Heen, and then there is Copeland, and, and uh, all these names, you know, Hilton. It's just open the mouth, the same things, but it's not full of action. Mark 16, 16 is not working now. And by the way, for those who come to the madness of taking service, you can find this on YouTube, they get beaten and died. And by the way, what's the point of doing this? Why do you want to show off that you are so anointed, you're holier than thou? When in reality, we're all the same. We're all the same, brothers and sisters. We're all sinners, and we all get saved by grace through faith. No works on our part. We believe and receive the same gospel for everybody, which is not John 3, 16. Okay? But it's 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4, Romans 1, 16. We believe how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture. He was buried. He rose again the third day, according to the scripture. We believe we receive this gospel. God saves us and he seals us with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the first possession unto the praise of his glory. And now we are members, in particular, of a new creature, the body of Christ. We have flesh of his flesh, bones of his bones, and members one of another. And Christ is the head. And is the savior of the body. Amen and amen. This is the revelation of the mystery. It's forming a body of believers, men and women, doesn't matter. Gentile Jews doesn't matter. Because all these differences, they disappear. You are now a new creature, part of the new creature. Destined, directed to heavenly places to reign with Christ there in heavenly places. That's why it says, fulfill my joy. <clears throat> that you be like-minded. <clears throat> having the same love, the love of the Spirit. Being of one accord, not always in contrast, not always debating. You can come against me, I don't care. You can call me whatever name you want, I really don't care. I'm telling you, if you don't believe, receive the gospel of the cross, you are self deluding or sabotaging yourself just because you want at all costs. 
I do of course, as I used to. I mean, people, you have to believe me. I pray for people that were dead, thinking they could be healed in, that, in terms they could be raised from the dead. So much I was into that cult. Yeah, that's a cult. In the course of 40 years in Italy, in Australia, as a visit in, in California, eh? and I, I had contact with lots of other believers from Germany, from Switzerland, from Sweden, and, and these pastors. I prayed with them. And here in Australia, people from Melbourne, from Sydney, and from Perth. Oh, man, you know. How many people I prayed for? And nobody, and they were sick for one reason or another, nobody of them got healed. Oh, they got all excited and, and anointed with oil, like James thought. There's not to us. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, red letters, is to about the little flock. Lordship of the other reason. Hebrews to Revelation is to Israel of the future. It was at the beginning there, Hebrews and first, second Peter, first, second, third John, James, Jude, Revelation. For those believers, kingdom believers there until the, the 12 died and the ministry finished and it's going to work, be effective, those Hebrew letters, epistles, during the period of the Great Tribulation, which is Jacob's trouble, weeks of years, Daniel 9. Israel will need the believing Israel, not all Israel. All Israel shall be saved, will be saved. Those who believe, go and read Romans 9, 10, 11. Paul talks about the past, the present, the future of Israel. The future is glorious, but at the time, when 2024, there is no Israel God on earth. So, in vain you are praying, bless Israel, Lord, to be blessed. You, if you do that, you bypass in the cross of Christ. You walk, you, you acting like an enemy of the cross. The power of God is in the cross of Christ. The preaching of the cross is the power of God. The power of God is Christ. And Christ has been made to us by God, to us, remember, righteousness, redemption, wisdom, sanctification. You want to sanctify yourself by doing certain things and not doing other things. Do whatever you want. But the point of the matter is being in line with the will of God in this dispensation. Okay, so God has written in the 12, 13 letters given to Paul. That's why Paul says, being of one accord, of one mind. And if you don't study this, you don't understand. If you don't get rooted and built up in Christ, if you're not strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, you're going to be swept away from some form of heresy. I've seen some brothers that are really careful and loved, but they go absolutely back, not back to that, even something worse. One has become a preterist, believing in the year 70, everything already happened, there is not going to be great tribulation, not going to be rapture. And another one, believing that we are really the Israel of God. Man, you know, stop this. Start studying. Study to show the self of truth unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the world of truth. There are billions, billions, billions of people. Unsaved. They are lost. And you don't have this in your heart. You know why? Because you don't understand yourself. You know what it means to, for, to be lost. It's not a way, okay? You're saying that God is going to punish you. Now you're going to hell. And after that, the lake of fire for eternity. Of course, there are hell deniers. Of course, there are universalists. Of course, there are so sleep promoters. I mean, heresies, ethics is absolutely exploding. It is tough as nails to find a woman, a man that simply believes and receives the gospel of Christ and preaches the word of truth according to the will of God in this dispensation of the of God. And when you find, praise the Lord. Pray for that brother, pray for that sister, and pray for me, please. Thank you. <laughs> what? I'm not Superman. I am not the authority. I'm here with the authority that comes from the words, the pure words of God, from our Lord, from heaven, through the Apostle Paul. Because people also say, oh, 
La posso po, la posso po, la posso po, mister, 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 oh, you're obsessed, no, 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 no. The body of Christ doesn't worship Paul. We worship Christ in spirit and truth. He's our Savior. He's the one who died on, on that cross to Calvary. He was the reason the third day for our justification. And he's the one who is the head and the Savior of the body. He's got the preeminence. He's the creator of the heaven and the earth. And you're still going with the big bang and evolution. No, please stop this. How can you stop? By studying. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show the self approved unto God a workman that needs not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. But then in verse 16 said, But shun vain and profane babblings because well increase unto more ungodliness. At the same time, you can study all the Bible from Genesis to Revelation because whatever is written at all time is written for our learning. We can learn wonderful truth about God, His character, His attributes, his power, his glory. In any let in any book of, of the Bible, there are 66, 70, if you consider that the book of Psalms is divided in five books. So it will be 70 books from Genesis to Revelation. Not everybody agrees with me. Once again, it's fine, no problem. The most important thing Paul says, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded. So to be like-minded, everybody needs to believe the same doctrine. Having the same love, that's the love of the Spirit. You can have the same love when you have the Spirit of God dwelling, dwelling in you. And that happens when you believe this glorious gospel. Being of one accord in agreement concerning the doctrine of one mind, which is the mind of Christ. Paul says, but we have the mind of Christ. And then he says, let nothing, please notice, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. I mean, this is pretty clear, eh? <laughs> uh, you can't talk to me like this. I am a Calvinist preacher. I have a congregation of 100,000 people. I have a website. I have, a, uh, you know, a YouTube channel with 1 million subscribers. Who cares? Don't exalt yourself. Give glory to God. There is only one who needs to be exalted and presented as the only true living God, the Savior of the body, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, you have to make Jesus Lord of your life. No, you can't. He's already Lord, with or without you. Let God be true and every man a liar. So, Brother Roberto, that would be me. Are oh, you hungry? <laughs> yes, I am. I'm broken, no angry. When I, uh, I go to this YouTube channels and all I see these people promoting another gospel, another Jesus, another spirit, the wrong eschatology, confusing the rapture with the, with the, the second coming and denying the rapture or saying the second coming is all one. No! God has put some divisions in his word because Christ he knows what he's doing and people don't know and also he's so gracious because he's written down for us to know he could say well you know you you want to say ignorant. well paul said if you want to stay ignorant say ignorant but it's not good for you eh? it's not the will of god the will of god he will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth how in the world you can get auntie and, and uncle mama and dad non uh, friends and, and cousins or anyone out there saved if you don't give them the gospel the saints if you give it if they reject it you can't really do anything about that but you've got to give it the gospel the saints not john 3 16 that was written to israel don't go around telling them they need to be born again because they couldn't possibly be born again if they transform themselves in in the wits of war of us because only Israel could be born again because they were born of God in the Old Testament, in the book of Exodus, and they needed to be born again. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Mabo not, I said to thee, I said to thee, John 3, go and read it. Nicodemus, ye, the nation, must be born again to see the kingdom coming and to enter in the kingdom with him, Jesus being the king. Nah. 
We don't want this man to reign over us. Yeah, let's see. It looks like the same now. You don't want the will of God. You just want to follow the teaching of your dear pastor or pastoress when he's a woman. That's madness, but it's going on like this, you know. But don't worry about that. They know how to collect tithes. Even though in the gospel of the kingdom, Jesus said to the twelve, freely receive, freely give. No, 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 no. We preach a gospel that God is not preaching. A Jesus that Jesus is not preaching. And a, God, a spirit that spirit is not preaching. And we are collecting tithes and offerings. That's terrible. Let nothing be done through strife and vainglory. But in lowliness of mind, lowliness, I'm really nothing, you know. And so are you. We're really nothing. We speck of dust, grasshoppers, according to Isaiah 40. The nations, oh, patriot, USA, USA, oh, France, Europe, NATO, China. Wait a second. The nations are a drop of water in the bucket. The Lord look from heaven and he sees this madness. Thank God and his grace and mercy and compassion and love and perfection he sent Christ. In due time he died for us sins. He was better us again to justify us. And when you believe that you can be saved. No, we stand all this my hand. Let nothing be done through strife and vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Yes, in the body of Christ, my brother, my sister is better than me. In religion, it's a disaster. Look not every man on his own things, every man also on the things of others. In which sense? Caring, helping. And then he goes to the main thing here. Philippians 2, 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who, being in the form of God, thought not robbery to equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Yeah, I'm not going to answer because I need to finish this. I got beautiful music. <laughs> That's my phone, sorry. But made himself for no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Okay? He made himself for no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. This great God incarnated and being found in fashion as a man, he had a body in the likeness of sinful flesh. Christ was not sinful. He knew no sin. He was perfect, innocent, glorious. He humbled himself. He didn't relinquish. He didn't empty himself of his divine attributes like enosis. Nah, there is ego. He humbled himself. And that's the glory of God. Also, the Father humbles himself because being such a great God, he humbled himself to look what's happening in the heavens and in on earth. You can find this in the scriptures. Being found in fashion as a man, he was not fashion, you know, like it. He looked like a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. This he became obedient, I mean. He went to this cross, to this death, knowing that was going to be terrible. And if I can say this, that was a, something predetermined. He knew exactly what was going to happen. But he humbled himself. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him. It's given him a name which is above every name. The, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. He said bow or bow? Bow. Or things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. These are three levels. Heaven, earth, and under the earth. 
What about this? They tell you, you are doing this ball and the space, the space. Where, where is the third heaven, please? Where is the third heaven if you believe in the spinning ball? But if you believe the Bible, remember when the Lord told Noah to build the ark? What is that? Three levels. There are patterns. God is not the other confusion. Confusion comes from Satan and man that cooperates with Satan and people that don't want to read and study the scriptures. And in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. And every time should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's already Lord. You don't make him Lord. My dear friends of Lordship Salvation, heresy. And every time should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The Godhead is exalted. Wherefore, my beloved, as you always obey, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with your tremor. No work for. That's why you need to have the King James Bible. Work out. Like you go to the gym and you work out. So you're already saved, but work it out with fear trembling because, hey, you belong to the Lord now eternity and this by grace not by merit not by works we have done works of righteousness we have done no but because of his grace in fact it says for it is God which works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure do all things without murmurings and disputings that ye might be blameless and harmless the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crook and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth what? The word of life. This is what we got to hold forth and preach and teach constantly the word of life, the word of God, the word of truth. No, the perverted, corrupt, 2000 plus perversions out there. Where they eliminated 60,000 verses where Jesus comes out to be a sinner, a liar. Shame on you, people. God has left this book. Shame on me because for 40 years I didn't use the King James Bible. Just in case, you know. Yeah. Yes, Roberto is going all. Shame on us. Holding forth the world of life. There am I rejoicing in the day of Christ, says Paul. That I have not run in vain, neither labor in vain. Yeah, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. For that cause also do you joy and rejoice with me. I want to clarify one thing. As Elias says to the Lord, Every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess to God. That is in Isaiah. As sown by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness, shall not return. Yet unto me every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall swear. So, Paul is quoting here in Philippians, is it? Or oh, Romans 14, sorry, Romans 14. Prophetic passages. He often does that to help people to understand what he's talking about. And here now, in Philippians, is repeated and amplified that in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, all things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and every tongue should confess Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. You better believe it now. Don't wait for that day because even the devil, because every time I'm going to confess that. But it's not going to get saved. You don't need to confess now to be saved. You need to recognize the truth and accept the truth, believe the truth, the word of truth. 
the gospel of your salvation. And you need to be able to rightly divide the world of truth. The gospel of your salvation is not what you've done or done or you didn't do. What you're going to do or you will is what Christ has done once and for all. How the Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And he was buried, rose again the third day according to the scriptures. If sometimes I get really hot, don't worry. I'm not against anybody. Those denominations, I pray to God. That they would just come to understand and say, what in the world are we doing? Let's go and read the, the word of God as God desires that we do, right at the body head. And come down from all this apparatus and be simple. Believers, saved and sealed by grace, announcing to this lost world that there is a glorious gospel because there is a glorious Christ who can save anybody no matter what kind of sins. When you believe in this God's gospel, you are saved, you are sealed, you are accepted in the below, you are blessed with those spiritual blessings in every place, you are complete in Christ, you are circumcised with the circumcision of Christ, you are delivered from this present evil world, you are now a son of God in Christ, and it's all by grace, as a gift, there's a free gift. You didn't contribute, you will not contribute in any way, shape or form, it's the work of God. Is the operation of God. And to God and God alone goes all the glory and praise and thanksgiving has forgiven us all our sins. And for this I'm very glad. Because I know my life, 75 years old, look back, wow, how many, many terrible sins, mistakes, um, wrong choices I hurt many people. I disobeyed God in many, many ways. And then comes this gospel of grace and said, if you believe this, you saved, you sealed, you forgiven, you accept, you blessed, you complete in Christ, and all the glory and praise and thanksgiving goes to the only one who deserves that. And that's our Lord, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. We thank you, Father. I know I got really all excited, but the reality is, my dear friends out there, if you're not saved, please, by the grace of God, by the, by the compassion of the Lord, believe this gospel, because being lost in religion, and it, 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 it's going to be that when you this life ends, you will find yourself in hell. You don't want to be there when Christ wants you to be in heavenly places with him. Just believe, receive, give glory to God. And forget all these titles uh, and all these denomination names. It's not important. The Lord doesn't know denomination. He knows only the body of Christ, the new creature where Christ is there. And every member out there, he sees from heaven. Every member is a light in the world announcing and preaching this glorious gospel, this glorious word. Preach the word. The foolishness of preaching. Okay. Okay, people will laugh at you. Who cares? Isn't that glorious that God is pleased with you because you are in Christ? Because he's, you are in his beloved. It's a, it's a love story between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And now it's overflown to us. And that's absolutely amazing. Yeah, in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth. And every time you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Remember, Jesus, he humbled himself. And doesn't say, oh, well, you can imitate. No. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give all the glory and praise and thanksgiving. Thank you for listening.